We are under caution. Ty Dillon decided to avoid turn two, but with splitters on these cars, you can't do what Jerry Nadeau did if, you know, years ago here and just skip that turn entirely. Go straight. But the front of the car is not down at all. Really flopping around quite a lot compared to everybody else. And this is coming off of the S's eight going into nine. It's a blind section as you come over a very fast right hand. 42 for Daniel Hemrick. He went 24 21 yesterday. So he was a couple of tenths slower than what we saw yesterday. Good. And here's a spinner, his teammate, Scott Legacy Jr., driving a three car this weekend. His first start for Richard Childress Racing, third of 2017. Yeah, I do too, Mike. I, I mean, Jeff, I see a lot of fluid out of this car, looks yeah, like. Yeah, there's fluid Something down. Something definitely came out of it. Yep. Earlier in the early practice, Matt Kenseth lost an engine when uh, under uh -oh. Oh, Eric Jones. That's into turn 11. Wow, that's pretty hard hit. I've seen this picture before. Unfortunately, pretty good chance this is wheel hop under braking, heavy braking in to turn 11. He's stuck on those things, too. It's still a good line. I don't see nobody else there. Oh, yeah. So that was the downshift from third to second, maybe even the second to first. I, I, I don't hear all the shifts there. But oh, Chase Elliott into the outside barrier. Oh, my. That killed that car. Fine. Sorry, guys. You've been putting down some pretty good laps. Yep. She's done. I mean, he used that at both ends. Got a little work to do. to go around, but I didn't see what caused oh, this. Oh, yeah. Really early. Boy, this is going to hit hard, too. He's trying, man, but the front yep. comes around Just and slaps slap. it right there, and then the back pops in there. Yeah, he even went past the tire barrier. Yeah, that is not safer barrier. Those are uh, those concrete dividers, I believe. Bam. Bam. Throw that car all to pieces. Yeah, somewhere on the entry to turn 10. He either carried a little bit too much speed or turned in a little bit too late, and that car started to come around. There was no saving it at Ladies that point. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome brother of Des Moines Police, Susan Farrell, end of watch, March 26, 2016, Chris Spray, as he gives the most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines! And the pole winner for the second time this season. He'll start on the outside, and his teammate, Christopher Bell, a two-time winner this season, starts on the inside. Green flag waves, and we are racing at Iowa. Great start by the teammates, dead even down into three. No give in either one of them as Gregson finally jumps out in front of Christopher Bell just as they round turn four, and Gregson will lead the first lap of the race. They got laps on their tires. That obviously hasn't happened. I think now it's going to be interesting to see how the veteran is able to talk to his crew chief, Junior Joyner, and tell him what's wrong with that 88 truck. Can they make the adjustments to move up through the field in the next stage? The green and white checkers await the four of Christopher Bell as he wins stage one here at Iowa. Caution is out at Iowa. The 83 of Mike Seneca spun, brought out the yellow. The first time that the yellow's been out tonight other than the end of stage one. truck series debut. It was down on the flat. Maybe it just come from pit road and trying to get, uh, get a little bit too much speed going before he got on the, on the banking. Second stage as you ride on board. How about this great bumper shot from John Hunter Nemechek getting around the four of Bell. Yeah, Rudy's. Uh, Rudy's truck here with Christopher Bell driving. Tires cooled off a little bit. He had about two good laps in him after this race. Oh. Trouble. Austin Wayne Self in the 45 and Kaz Gralla in the 33. Oh, and also big spin on the back straightaway. Oh, is way off. Well, you heard Rhodes say. We're done. Oh, bad news for Ben Rhodes in that 27. Tires. See what happens here. Ooh, three wide was the 
attempt, and Kaz Grala moved up into the 13 of Coughlin, made a little bit of contact with the inside wall. Nice job by Austin Self getting his way through that. That's a battle for us, uh, 13th, 14th, 15th, right around in that area, as you see. The 13 got his nose in there, and the 33 went up, and 13 was able to back out of it. But the 33 made contact with Rhodes. Yeah, it's a situation I don't think that the 33 of Casgrala realized that they were three wide there. Look how long Rhodes battled that 27 truck as he went down into turn three and finally lost control. We're going to ride along with him right here. Here in front of you has no dented for tires last time. Inside three wide here for a little bit. Here, hold on, hold on, hold on to it. Hold on to it. Keep coming here. Keep coming. Hold the brake here. Hold the brake. Hold the brake. Hold the brake. Ah, yeah, pretty good look right, against the outside side. wall. Pretty heavy contact on that left front. That's what Bell will do. Be fun. It's going to be fun for us to watch, right? As he battles back yeah, through absolutely. this field. We know how fast that Ford truck is and what a talented driver Christopher Bell is. He might even gamble a little bit. Wait, maybe wait another 10 or 20 laps so they really make a difference and then still have that final set of tires for late in the that race. Time, look see, close to the wall. See that rear end wiggling around when he came off the corner? He's driving away from Zotter, but he hasn't backed out of it at all. Oh! Matt Crafton hard in the outside wall. That's going to bring out the caution, Crafton. Well, that was a big hit for Matt Crafton with 15 to go, and now everybody's going to come to pit lane, right? I want tires, Mike. Me too. Bill. See, Matt, there's the 98. He was running the high groove. Goes by the 99 of Brandon Jones. Get down in the corner here. Oh. Wow. Yeah, Grant made the move to the inside. He really closed on Matt really, really quickly. And don't know if Matt had some sort of an issue or not, but we saw him close up three or four truck links in the matter of a half a straight away. Crafton doesn't look too happy about it regardless. Uh, Matt, we mentioned earlier, Matt's never finished out of the top 10 at this racetrack, and that streak's going to come to an end, unfortunately. You see Matt's reaction, the two-time series champ. Tough Matt day Hunter for Nemechek Matt. Nemechek coming around to get the white flag. Nemechek took the four tires on the last pit stop, and he has made it work. John Hunter Nemechek a half a lap away from going back to back. He was so strong a year ago, but he couldn't finish the job. But tonight he has done it. John Hunter Nemechek wins at Iowa. Big crash off of turn four. The 24 of Haley and the 51 of Harrison Burton involved in that one. Oh, what a shame. Harrison Burton did such an outstanding job here in his third truck series race. But between Burton on the uh, inside of that 51 and Justin Haley, um, Burton got a little bit loose. Uh, just dove in there and last lap, last corner, thought he could make a Maybe a dive into turn three and gain the advantage. It didn't work out. Yeah, Hard that, contact by both those traps. That was a battle for the top five position. Grant Enfinger, we saw him go by after they got together, and he finished in the fourth spot. What a thriller. Like that. But he did it when it meant something. How about Johnny Sauter hanging on the second? Uh, on four old tires. What a, what a great drive by Sauter. I think he learned a lot from Briscoe running that high line. He knew those older tires would work up there, and he certainly took advantage of it. Well, and Jerry Kennan made the call for John Hunter Nemechek taking those four. He's with Caitlin. Well, John Hunter Nemechek once again finds himself in a familiar place here in victory lane for the second week in a row, getting some congratulations from his dad. John, I know the efforts this team put in to get this truck turned around last week to this week. How do you think that just validates the group you're working with and all the efforts you guys put in? That's definitely special. Uh, all year we felt really good about this whole stretch. Um, Gateway, Iowa, and Kentucky. So hopefully we can go to Kentucky and make it three in a row. But I 
I can't say enough. Thank you to all my guys. They're so determined. They're dedicated. They work as many hours as needed. And this is fun getting to Victory Lane. Uh, I got to thank Shannon and Connie from Fire Alarm Services for coming on board. It's sad that they weren't here, but I know that they're watching. So uh, this is for you guys. Um, I have to thank all the fans, uh, NASCAR Camera World Truck Series, Rockwell, Rocky Ridge, Romco, uh, Barry's Bullets, DAV Constructors, uh, Donna Malden. Um, without them, this truck team would have never been alive. So um, especially I have to thank my dad, but every one of these guys that works on this team, uh, this is awesome. Nice job. Congratulations. Back-to-back -back wins for the A team. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Boiler Operator for Green Plains from Fairmont, Minnesota, Jeff Olson, and CEO of Growth Energy, Emily Score, as they deliver the most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start Jeff. your engines! Didn't take us long to get three wide here, did it, Adam? Great racing off of turn two. There you see Matt Tiff, Justin Allgaier, and Ty Majeski good in that outside lane in the 60. Yeah, definitely a big wiggle for the 19 getting into turn three there. Also, he had to make a big save. Christopher Bell, the pole sitter, took the outside lane, quickly jumped out of Michigan. He said, I worked in late models with Chris Gabart. I was comfortable with him. I had never met Jacob Cantor before this morning, and now the two are leading this race as we have our first caution of the night. It's the 90. Dexter Bean showed some speed early in qualifying, and he will bring out the yellow flag just shy of halfway in stage one and row seat for the Dexter Bean spin into turn one. Got a little bit tight when he was racing with I that. Go high, I go car up there lost a little bit of air off that rear spool and around he went Sam did a nice job spotter did a nice job as well directing Sam around guys battling to try to stay in the top 15 Majeski's 14th Reddick 15th how about this second career start for Christopher Bell on the pole stage one winner at Iowa second to Sam Hornis Jr. top series regular is going to be William Byron he collects eight points His teammates right behind him all guy are fourth Elliott Sadler from 38 to fifth Others in the top 10, but the two car of Ben Kennedy is inside the top 10. He is ninth Ooh. as we get a caution, and it's Sam Hornets Jr. who was inside the top five and won this race one year ago, was scored in the third position when he got it turned around and hit the wall. Sam, you're on board with the 22 here. That's Christopher Bell, the 20 and right behind him. Well, we see Bell use that top side to get a nice run down into turn one, carrying a lot of momentum. Inside. A little tough to tell. It looks like Bell maybe just slipped up the racetrack just a little bit and, and possibly got cut Sam's left rear in the process of it. It sounded like the tire was down before he made contact with the outside safer barrier. You could hear that flapping already before he even hit the outside wall. Yeah, that flapping's a tire down, but I, I think he had contact to that's cut it, that tire. That's what I mean, before he point. hit the wall, yeah. yeah. For the third time tonight, it's for one of the pre-race favorites. Sam Hornish Jr. is out. William Byron is leading at Iowa. Christopher Bell said he got free underneath you, got a little loose. What were you experiencing in the car? Uh, car was pretty good. Our discount tire Ford Mustang was, uh, you know, getting better. I felt like we were heading in the direction that we needed. Uh, I tried to move my line up just a tad bit through three and four, and that allowed the 20 to get a run on me, and it seemed like he just overdrove down the corner, got loose and, and into us. And it's a shame for all the guys that's on this car. Um, you know, not the way that I wanted to de debut being back here at Team Penske. And, um, you know, I've made my own fair share of mistakes, but man, I hate being on that end of it and uh, hoping to get the opportunity to come back here and run later on this year and, uh, you know, also some other races, but uh, it's just not how we wanted to go at all. Thank you, Glad you're okay. Tonight, that may pay off for him. Whoa! Oh, and as we talk about him, he loses it going into three here. Hold on to it. The classic jinx and contact with Ty Majeski, who's making his first career start tonight. And for the Kyle Benjamin fans, uh, right front damage coming to the top. 
A sincere apology because we absolutely talked him into that spin. Position for a stage win. Let's go back and look at the reason for caution number four. You think maybe he entered the corner a little bit higher than, than he had been? He was flirting with the with the edge of where the debris is on the racetrack right there. When he got sideways, we see all that smoke and all that dust coming off of the race car. Nobody had been up to where they were three or four inches off of the wall yet. He may have just slipped that right rear a little bit into those marbles and it jumped out from underneath him. But then again, watching that groove there, it looks like that thing was loose really early in the corner. I don't think, uh, I think he just got loose entering and it, uh, it ultimately collected him up into the fence. Yeah, I really hate it for Majeski too, because he came along with nowhere to go, having a solid run tonight. I think all of us in NASCAR circles love stage racing because of the strategy. When we go green, the top nine drivers will have stayed out under Side this car. Making up spots like crazy, three and four wide, he's making some great moves up there. Kenny, one of those drivers that did come down pit road, and those drivers that just pitted will stay out when we get the caution to end stage two. It was a track position strategy play for them, but the door opened for Brendan Gone, and that track position is big because those on the older tires behind him going to hold off the ones on newer tires. Byron comes back to second, <laughs> but it's Brendan gone who wins stage two. How about that? I'm glad we have electronic scoring because I don't know how we're going to score third, fourth, fifth, and sixth just yes, by You eye. saw him on pit road there, got into the wall up in turn two. Yeah, probably had a tire rub resulting from that damage he had earlier. We are trying to pick his car up on pit road right now. There's a tail end of it as well. So the pit road remains closed. Every one of these laps that they ride around on the caution is going to help these guys get closer to their window. Right now, we're 102 laps to go. They come back around, it's going to be 101 laps to go. So I think these guys have gotten so good at stretching fuel rig, and you know that, that, that I think if the pit window is 95, they can definitely make it from here. And there's so many tricks inside the race car that you can do. If the crew chiefs told us before the race we can make it 95 laps, in their gut, they're thinking we can probably go 105 if we have to. We can tell our driver to lift at the start-finish line, push that clutch in, shut the motor down when you're racing under green flag. When you're under caution, you do that anyways. Right from the time that you fire the motors on this racetrack, you're in fuel conservation. Caution out, seventh time tonight. Ah, there it is, Spencer Gallagher. I got Kyle Benjamin. You got Spencer Gallagher. I was talking about how great Benjamin was doing. Regan added his thoughts. He spins and ends his night for the most part. And, and here's Gallagher. Well, we can't go to the rest of this show without talking about anybody. <laughs> Dexter Bean also with some damage yeah, in the night. A lot of 90. damage. Crash claims are us. A, a, fitting, a fitting sponsor with 88 laps to go on the 90 car. Unfortunately, pretty appropriate. Yeah, strategy play here. We'll get to that in a moment. First, the replay of caution number seven. Looks like Spencer just lost it on his own up on the top side there. Maybe uh, jumped the cushion just a little bit, possibly. I don't know. It looked like maybe the 16 of Ryan Reed was in the proximity with a 23 car. Couldn't tell if there was any contact or Singing not. Singing his praises. Goes for a slide. I don't know. Yeah, I, think, I think he just got a little, maybe got a little bit high. There's Dexter Bean, that was top almost, of your screen. Almost separate, really, from that, from the Spencer Gallagher incident. The only thing I have to wonder on the Gallagher incident, if possibly there was a little contact that we didn't see. We see him going up the track sideways already. Maybe they made contact even earlier in the corner back towards the entry yeah, or something. Yeah, quite possible. Slow on the left side. They had great strategy and really improved their race car, but that was a slow, slow stop for the 62. The left front tire changer had an issue. Caution's out. And, and there goes Ryan Reed spinning to bring out the caution for the eighth time tonight. And it happened right by Christopher Bell, and he's got damage. He got into the outside wall. Look Look at all the that. damage to that to our leader. Oh, my. We're going to have to go back and see right, exactly right, what happened. Huge disappointment for Christopher Bell. He was doing a great job doing what he needed to do with that race car to keep Where'd it out go? front. 48 made contact with the 16 of Reed, and the 48 came away from the 16, caught Christopher Bell in that right rear corner. Such a tough break for Christopher Bell. He was, he was definitely an innocent bystander on that one. You see the 48 get just a little bit loose. Probably didn't know that the 16 was coming with that much of a run to the outside of him right there. You know, a decent amount of damage for Ryan Reed, but a great save. And as we look at the scoreboard here, he's still on the lead lap in seventh. We know he's got a set of tires. This is on board with Brennan Poole. Inside 20, inside four. 
Watch out. An amazing job by Ross Chastain, the four, to avoid that. Ryan Sieg doing an awesome job. Ooh, 16's in the wall. That's going to bring out a caution. Justin Allgaier, 19. The right front. Allgaier, 19, first car, one lap down. He'll get the free pass. We heard Ryan Reed say something broke in the right front. Looks like he's got a left front problem as well right take now. Take the wave around here. Exactly. We heard Ryan Reed say something broke in the right front. You can tell right there there was some sort of an issue either with the right front or the left front. The left front is flat now. I have to believe maybe it was the left front. He just misdiagnosed it a little bit right there with that tire being flat. Like his first win at this moment. Halfway down the back straightaway for William Byron. One week ago, had his heart broken at Michigan. Tonight, it's going to be all about a celebration. Career win number one for William Byron comes at Iowa. You are awesome. I thank you very much. And now he's won in the Xfinity Series. Second driver to get their first career victory at Iowa Speedway. The other, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. In 2011, he went on to win the championship. Well, I'll promise you this. These guys are uh, they are not thinking about anything other than this celebration tonight. But come tomorrow morning, they'll hear that stat, and they'll be really excited. They'll think that that's a good omen going forward the rest of the year. Last week, William Byron was kept out of victory lane by 12 thousandths of a second, but no such decimal points tonight. Great great to get a call from Rick Hendrick oh, as you win your first one. How good does it feel to close the door and get your first Xfinity Series win tonight? Man, it feels awesome. It's uh, Thank you, Mr. H, for, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, this is It's so cool to run full-time in the series. Everything's come full circle for me. I raced late models for, for JRM a few years ago, and I remember LW telling me uh, he wanted to see me in an Xfinity car. So uh, just to see it all come to fruition now and, and have a victory is, is really awesome. And I think we had a, a first or second place car. Uh, we got a little bit loose, one run, and then we got back on cycle uh, there at the end and was able to, to take off. So really proud of these guys, Dave. Uh, uh, everyone on the Exalta team, uh, thanks Exalta for being on the car. Windsor as well, so it's really cool. Well done, young man. You. William Byron, 19 years old, the Xfinity Series winner at Iowa. And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, comedian, actress, and voice of Cruz Ramirez in the new Disney Pixar feature Cars 3, Cristela Alonso, accompanied by Toyota Master Diagnostic Technician, Mr. Rene Doss. Drivers, start, start your engines! engines! What do you say we get this thing started, Mike? Boogity, boogity, boogity! Let's go road racing, drivers! McMurray breakaway for Chip Ganassi Racing. Yeah, uh, Larson said, catch me if you can. That car is fast, <laughs> and when you start up front, track position is king, and he's taking advantage of that pole. Tire temp, air pressure starting to come in right now. Those first couple corners, you saw some movement by the cars. Even uh, our second place runner, Jamie McMurray, had a big moment as he came around that bend past the start finish line. I'm surprised he's in second place right now. Slowest corner in NASCAR. 35 miles an hour in the center of turn Junior, 11. I think he has a really good car on the longer runs. It's pretty aggressive uh, right with Jeff, watching him going off into turn 11 here. Back to the next guy. He's right with Ooh, a little block by Danica. Whoa, Not a good Junior idea. Loses it under braking. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, he clips Larson. Oh, no. no. Right Are you kidding me? Well, now that was one of those late race situations like we talked about. 
Junior pulled to the inside. Danica came down to give him not a whole lot of racetrack. He locked it up and spun. Not a lot of grip. You see her move over a little bit, which I, I thought he made. It, I thought he made a great move. I thought she left just enough open. But when he got on the brakes hard and maybe went, went to that downshift, the back end came around. That's sixth and seventh place right there. Quite a battle. Two of Keselowski, oh. or yeah, I think it was maybe Keselowski. Wow. Pit Road's a busy place, man. Last point available in stage one. Martin Truex Jr. takes the green and white checkers and beats A.J. Allmendinger to the flag by 1.2 seconds. He's going down this hill right here faster than you realize. And the 23 goes around. That's uh, the Israeli driver, a long day from the NASCAR Euro Series. Thanks yeah. for a long day. And caution is out. Yeah, somebody Some damage to the 17. Oh man, that car wow. is destroyed. What happened? That baby. Look at that. The left front is. Let's see what happened here. Damage right, to we're Danica's gonna, nose. We're going to ride with Danica Patrick. Whoa! Whoa! Somebody made contact. Side, right side of Danica. Oh, they were three wide. Yeah. Is that Larson and Dale Earnhardt Jr.? Yeah. Forces him into Danica, turns her around. And that's the caution flag. And she. Bam. Man, backs right into. Yeah, he's in house. Sure, stand out. Thought she would lock it down and keep it up. But not that you have that much control when your car's out doing what hers is doing, but I know that's what he thought was going to happen. Gosh, oh, that's a hard lick. She was in 19th place. Having a great run. The car is good. Ricky yeah. was 22nd. Jikes oh. right there. Again, coming down into turn 11. See Prime that? passing point. Watch the white number 47. Yeah, I think when you get down on that inside, you see him kind of bottle that bottle down that inside. There's a lot of dirt trash yeah. down there. Yeah, that's Busher. He's on the outside and going around. Yeah, and I just don't think he expected uh, all those cars like uh, De Benedetto to move to the left. He's Whoa. been seeing cars block that inside lane. He could go the outside, and roll around there. Yeah, I saw that. But that was just too. I think Kyle Larson might have clipped him. Clint Boyer definitely did. Oh, uh, he, he wheel hot. 42 is going to be covered at the bottom here. Hold on to it. 42 guy. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. cleared from the infield care center. Ricky, these restarts so intense here at Sonoma. What happened over in turn four? Yeah, they were just three wide in front of us and uh, looked like they all three hit together and uh, then Danica spun there and uh, tried to get down uh, below it and uh, and hit it. So, um, oh, I saw it. I don't need to see it. <laughs> I was in the driver's seat. So, um, you know, it's just unfortunate. Um, you know, we were having a little issue with our engine temps that we were looking at, but all in all, just really trying to bide our time and uh, save the tires. We saved to set that first stage. Uh, we we're going to try to do the same thing there, um, that second stage. So we had more tires left uh, for the end of the race. Now we got good years left that aren't going to get used. Thanks, Ricky. Oh. Just a little oh, bit. Billy Johnson. Yep. Denny Hamlin takes evasive action. So does Joey Logano. Yeah. Denny was down the inside, maybe going to make a move on Billy Johnson. See the damage on the nose of Billy Johnson from that contact. Suarez was 10th. He recovers in 21st. Other than aerodynamically messing the front of the car up, it's not in the grill area. That's uh, in the hood area. No problem maintaining this lead. Final corner of stage two in Sonoma. And Jimmy Johnson. Gets the green and white checkered tablecloth. Brad Keselowski second. And Larson gets Newman or does he? Drag race. 
No, he doesn't. Race. He doesn't make it. Newman doesn't give up easy. No. So this race. All right, Davey, all you need to do is just back up your entry just a little bit. Easier on the brakes, easier on your wheel spin for now. So don't try to pass anybody then. No, nope, but I don't want anybody to pass us. I mean, if you can run up on them, pass them. So just take it easy and save your stuff. We're not critical until 10 to go. It would take longer than we have time Woo! left. <laughs> that's a great save right there. You know, but that's, that's not just two wheels off. I mean, as Morris said, does that not look like something he could do? Run off the track like that, not hit anything, come back on? Just Perfect. a little dust in the wind. We'll see right here, real close racing. Battle between Busher. Kenseth gets into the side of Billy Johnson. Oh, Johnson makes contact with the left rear of Kenseth, turns him around. Yep. That happened to Kenseth here a few years ago. Him and uh, Clint Boyer made contact in a very similar situation. Matt thought he had the pass made, but he didn't clear Johnson. Wasn't quite there. Right behind them. Whoa, Morris, come back, buddy. You know, he went out of sight. Harvick's been <laughs> getting quite a show from Morris. Oh, he lost a couple of spots. See what happens. Ooh. Ah, he just got yep. in there hot. Thought he had a chance at Jimmy Johnson, yep. and that yep. hole closed up. It's Denny Hamlin and second place Clint Boyer. A, a few laps ago, I saw Denny Hamlin go right off the track and turn four. He's having a lot of grip issues getting in the corner. We saw him go wide, giving up that second place or third place. Now, now Keselowski takes over that third spot. Well, his tires are 20 laps fresher than Hamlin's or Boyer's. Well, there's a second place right, right in front of him, so he's got a shot at coming second here. Oh, oh we got a big, big wreck crash. on the front straightaway with Casey, Casey Kane. Kane. Has big hit, crash. hit the wall at turn one. White flag continues to wave, no caution. Wow. Kevin Harvick trying to nail down a one, two, three for Ford, and the caution flag waves. That was a huge impact for Casey Kane. Clean yeah, sweep. Freaking job. Awesome job. Checkered flag in the air. Kevin Harvick. Clint Boyer, Brad Kozlowski, Denny Hamlin. Kyle Busch, a one, two, three for four. Right, trying to make a pass. Let's see what happens right here. Maybe he just—I think he just got oh, out no. in the debris. Yeah, he just got dirt. He just got out in the uh, loose stuff and then just went straight in the fence. And boy, it pushed that wall back. That was hard hit, guys. Let's see that. He's got enough fuel to do that He's burnout. Good. He's good to go. <laughs> I didn't think fuel was going to be an issue, particularly the way he slowed down, but man, you never know. Kevin Harvick taking home the checkered flag is today's Sunoco fueling victory. Oh, by the way, one of us picked Bakersfield, it. California. Let's go down there for the celebration. The second win for Stuart Haas Racing since switching over to Ford, but the first for Kevin Harvick, an ice cold bush beer there. Kevin, everything this team has had to endure to switch over to Ford. What has the journey been like for you, for your crew chief, for this entire team, to be patient to get back to victory lane? Well, first thing I want to do is thank everybody from Mobile One, Jimmy Johns Bush, uh, Outback, Hunt Brothers, Morton Buildings, Textron Off-Road, um, everybody at Ford, and everybody at Stuart Haas Racing for really everything that they've done. So it's um, it's been a lot of work. You know, a lot of the guys uh, have put in a lot of hours and it's paying off. I, I feel like we have a lot of room to grow. And for us, it's been OK. You know, we've been competitive. We just hadn't got to victory. And I felt like we've had a couple opportunities to get there, but just uh, came up a little bit short. So this is worth the wait, you know, to come to Sonoma for so many years and, um, you know, to win yesterday, coming back to the K&N series and come back here today. I guess we'll have to do that again because it worked out pretty good. So just really proud of everybody. They had a great strategy. and. We're able to make it happen. He is the California kid, gets his first win here in Sonoma, and his son Keelan was on FaceTime with a thumbs up.